Hey, what's up everybody and welcome to another sketch design session. Today we're going to be working on a mobile app design screen that I found on Pinterest. Pinterest is a great resource by the way if you're looking for mobile app design inspiration. Just search that basically you'll find a ton of good info. Uh, lots of screenshots that you can grab and kind of practice and sharpen those skills. So speaking of sharpening those skills we're going to be recreating this screen here. I'm going to break it down for you and show you uh, basically how they went about doing it and I'm not going to recreate everything. Some of the text stuff uh, is pretty basic so I'll skip over that but we'll go over the, the the rough estimate of the design. Not rough estimate but the rough layout of the design. And I want to give attribution to the person that created this. This is Matthias Johansson. Check him out. Let's go ahead and click on this guy, drag it down to sketch, and we'll open it up in sketch and then get started uh, designing. All right, so here we go. We have the screen. I'm just going to move this over a bit. Let's hit R for rectangle on our keyboard here. I'm just going to draw one out. And if you're looking for a course on sketch, uh, maybe you're seeing this on Udemy in my course. You might be seeing this on YouTube. Uh, if you are watching this on YouTube, you can find the full course. Look at the link in the description. Check it out. I've got everything on the basics, mobile app design, logo design. Got lots of cool projects in there. Get you to be a, uh, an advanced user in Sketch before you know it. All right, so I'm going to click on this guy, our original here. And then in the upper right, I'm going to look at the dimensions so I can kind of create my own little artboard. And it looks like it's 564 in width by 1003 in height. I got the height down because I dragged it all the way down. I'm going to click on this guy and just manually set this to 564. Bring it over just a little bit. In terms of colors, I'm just going to set this to white. I'll add a border. Lighten it up just a little bit. And we're going to start with the technical side on the top here. And rather than recreate all these icons, which you could totally do in Sketch, just for the, the sake of time, I went out to the Noun Project and grab some icons and I'm gonna give attribution to these guys I've got a settings icon uh, and let's see where are the names do 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 you can find the attribution text right here in the box so there's the first one for the settings icon I grabbed a, a really basic arrow just gonna speed things up if I grab these and there's the attribution and then we've got the camera icon and there's the attribution for that as well all right, so there we go. Let's jump back into Sketch. I'm going to grab those guys and bring them in. So insert, go to image here. And I've already got these saved and downloaded in a folder. Let's grab all three of those, bring them in. They are going to be a little bit big. Let's just stick them over here for right now. And I'll get them resized. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started on this top portion here. This is a little more technical and it's design-ish. If you're really into that, uh, stick around. I'll show you how to break this down. This is really good practice in terms of creating kind of custom shapes and getting the coloring right. So could be helpful for you when you're designing things in, in the future instead of just putting a plain white box up here or uh, a photograph up here. Take it a little step further. So I'm going to hit R for rectangle on my keyboard. I'm going to draw out a rectangle that's roughly the same size as what we have over here. And I'm going to start with what looks like the bottommost layer. And that's this guy here, and it stretches all the way across. So that, to me, looks like a gradient. So with this selected, I'm going to come over here to the fills. I'm going to change from a solid to the gradient. And the direction looks like it's going maybe from top left to bottom right. So let's change our our trajectory here. So with this bottom bottom one selected here, I'm going to get my color picker, this little eyedropper tool, and I'm just going to select right in between these two here. So there's a shape right here that you see. It's kind of transparent. It stretches down here, but there's a little triangle right down here. If you can see that, I'm going to grab that color there. I'll select my top reference point here, and I'm, I want to get this area up here, that, that purplish color. It's all pretty much purple, but... All right, so there we go. That's good to get us started. Now let's go ahead and get this guy right here. So you'll see that it kind of comes down. 
uh, comes up here. So the way I'm going to tackle that, so it's a couple different ways to do this. I could use the vector drawing tool and just draw out the points, which would be pretty quick to do. Uh, alternatively, you could create a pretty big rectangle and then use Boolean operations to kind of slice it up. I think we'll just use the vector drawing tool. It's pretty quick and easy. I'll place my first point here. Next one right there. And let's get zoomed in here so you can see. So this shape comes up here. It doesn't keep going across here. I'm going to place my next point here. And if you mess up, don't worry. You can always go back and, and move these move these points around, even after you've completed drawing the shape. So do not worry there. I'll place my own right here. Go back to the original and close it off. And you can either click outside or come over here on the right-hand side and click Finish Editing. I'll click Finish Editing. All right, now if we zoom in here, you'll see that it's off just a little bit. So what I want to do is double click that to put it back into edit mode. I'm going to drag that over a little bit and that should be good. I'm also going to come over here to the inspector. Let's apply a fill to fill the center of that. Let's take off the border. We don't need that guy. And I'm going to zoom out. So what we want to do now is try to match up this color here. So I'm just going to move it over a little bit or a lot. And I'm pretty sure this is a gradient it's a little tough to tell which way the gradient is going. You just kind of have to look at, at the coloring. And I want to say it goes the same way. So you've got kind of a, a darker purple in the upper left here. It starts to get lighter down here. Now that's not to say that the reference point isn't right here in the middle and goes straight across. It could definitely be that. So we tried different, a couple different things, but I know it's a gradient. So let's Let's set the gradient. Let's start off by putting our reference point in the upper left here and maybe put the other one down here in the bottom right. So with this top reference point selected, I want to use my eyedropper tool, select this dark purple, and then we'll come down here to this guy. And for now, we'll just select like right here. So that'll be good to get us started. Let's click off. And if I drag this over, it should match up and it does look a little bit off. So one, one way around that. Now it doesn't have to be perfect for, for this, but if you're trying to get it perfect and for some reason it's not matching up, one thing you could do is come in here, select your reference point, or not double click, but let's go back to our gradient. Let's make sure this top reference point is selected. And I'm gonna move this, this little circle here to change the color slightly. And what I want is for this to start blending in and matching up. So I'm thinking it's, it's a little bit purplish gray, and as I drag down, you'll see that it starts disappearing here, and the line, you, it's a little bit harder to see where that line is, which makes me think that maybe this reference point should be changed up. I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but just to show you how to figure things out in terms of coloring when you're trying to uh, recreate designs, get a little bit better at this stuff. You can select that and just kind of click and drag this around until that line starts to blur a bit. So I'm going to leave that alone for now and I think I'm happy with where it's at. Let's go ahead and move this over. Right about there is good. Now let's get this guy here. So this square here has a little bit of transparency to it because you can definitely see through here. This one might have a little bit of transparency to it as well, but I think I'm going to leave it as is. So for this guy, what we're going to do is let's get the vector drawing tool out again, and let's just draw this out. I'm going to say finish editing, kind of repeat this process, take out the border, apply a fill. Let's move this over. And in terms of gradients, I'm just going to keep going with kind of the left to right on this. So let's click this, apply a gradient. Let's move this reference point to the left. Let's move this guy to the right. Remember, we do want to place, uh, we do want to add some transparency to this. So with this left point selected, let's get our color picker. Let's go right to the point here. Get that selected. And then on the right hand side, same thing. Select that darker color. 
to click off. I'm going to set that over here where it's supposed to go, and then I'm going to lighten it up with the transparency. I'm going to keep going until I can see through these two here quite a bit. And that's about what I want. And that looks good. All right, so next up we have this kind of rectangle here. So for this one, let's go ahead and create an actual rectangle. And we'll see what that looks like. So I'll hit R for rectangle on my keyboard. Let's draw something out that's kind of thick here, or kind of wide. I'm going to click Rotate up here at the top on my toolbar. Let's change the color of this to, let's go black, and then make it really opaque. I want to see through this quite a bit. I'm going to move this in line here. Let's get zoomed in. I'm hit Command and just roll on my mouse. And then to move over, I'm just held, uh, holding the space bar and then clicking and dragging around. So what I want with this rotate selected is I want this line here to have that same angle as what's behind it. So let's go ahead and take this right about there. And I want to say that's a pretty good angle. I'm going to click off. Let's resize this. Okay, perfect. So now let's get off of here. And then let's drag it over. Now, the angle necessarily doesn't have to be perfect right here because we can hide it under that shape that we have on the other side. But the angle does have to be right here. So the fact that it's right here makes it more right right about there, if that makes sense. I'm going to go ahead and drag that over here. It's about right there. And let's, let's pop a smart guide in here just to make sure that this is roughly where it should be. Maybe about there. And then I'll get rid of my smart guide, I'll right click, remove all horizontal guides. And I'm going to drag this guy underneath from my layers panel, underneath that path right there. So now it is going to be behind there. And you can drag it up and kind of behind there a little bit more. So with that guy selected, let's bring the opacity back up. Let's apply a gradient. And the gradient's going to go from left to right as well. Let's put this reference point right here, and I'm going to put this one, come on. Usually it'll snap to this here, but that's fine. So with this point selected right here, and it looks like it's adding some extra points, which I don't want. I'll just delete that. With this guy selected, I'll get my eyedropper tool. Let's come over here and just select, try to select the color from the bottom, the bottom of the shape here. I'm going to select my right reference point. Let's get the eyedropper tool. Let's go ahead and get that selected. Now I'm going to lighten this up and make it really transparent. So it matches up. I think right about there is good. Okay, so now to create this, this custom shape, there's a couple different ways you can go about this. If I double click and put this into edit mode, I could place some points right here, right here and then delete these guys and hopefully it matches up with that line. Uh, I think a better way to do that would be to use your boolean operations to create a custom shape. So what I'm gonna do, what does that mean? <laughs> uh, I need to have two shapes that I can select that I can create this custom shape. Now I have this bottom rectangle which I can use to slice this guy with but I have to create a copy because I need to have two shapes to be able to do that. Let's go ahead and uh, hit Command D to duplicate this shape, which I just did. If you look over here in the Layers panel, I've got my, my original rectangle, and now it's, there's a copy here. I'm going to hold down Shift, and I'm going to select this guy here. I'll go up to my Boolean operations, and the one that I want is Intersect, because I want, the, I want to keep the portion where these guys are touching. So if I click Intersect, now I just have that. And I probably should have waited to apply the coloring to that because now it's changed and it's absorbed the color of the, the bottom layer. So let's go ahead and with that selected, I'll choose the gradient. Let's make it from left to right. With this selected, let's move this over a little bit. Let's repeat that process from earlier. Let me get my eyedropper tool. Select that purple. Select that point. I'm going to get my eyedropper tool and select this guy right here. Now let's lighten it up. Give it some opacity. 
So something like that there. All right, now we have to do this uh, shape right here. So a couple different ways we can go about this. I think what I'm going to do is just grab this guy. Let's see if we can duplicate this. Maybe flip it. Oh, there we go. So flip it a few times. Got the angle that we want, more or less. We'll bring it down. Let's bring the opacity up, actually, so we can see. And I'm going to lighten this up so I can see it just a little bit better. Zoom in here. Don't want it in edit mode. And I'm just going to place this portion here right in line with this angle. That's what I want. All right, so that's good. Now we need another shape so we can create the same kind of cutaway. And the way I'm going to do that is I'll just hit R for rectangle to draw one out. And I just want it to be right in the corner here. And then with that one selected, I'm going to select this guy and do the same thing as before. I'll click intersect. And now I have that little piece that I was after. Let's go ahead and get the coloring right for that. This is a grading as well. And one way you can tell which way the grading is going it looks, it looks a lot lighter here on the left-hand side, a little bit darker on the right-hand side. So using that, I'm going to go ahead and change my reference points. Actually, let's make this from left to right. With this right point selected, let's go ahead and get our eyedropper tool. I want the darkest portion, which I believe is in the upper right. And then with this guy, let's get this in the lower left. There we go. So not too tough. It took a little bit of time to do it, but totally worth it. All right, stick around for part two where we continue to break down this design in the next video. Thanks for watching.